Joining us now to discuss Dr. King's life and his famed letter from a Birmingham jail is Pastor Brian Loritz, the lead pastor of the Fellowship Memphis Church and the editor of Letters to a Birmingham Jail. A response to the words and dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Pastor, we appreciate your time. Thanks for Skyping in from Memphis. Well, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time, so thank you very much for having me. Dr. King wrote the letter from the Birmingham jail. Tell us about the collected letters in your book to the Birmingham jail. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, if you were to pick up the book Letters to a Birmingham Jail, which I had the joy of editing, uh, what you'll notice is right in the beginning is Dr. King's entire letter from a Birmingham jail, which of course served as the impetus for, uh, for the book that I just came out with earlier this year. Uh, what's interesting about that letter that he wrote, you know, um, it's easy to assume that he wrote that letter to, you know, um, hateful individuals like the KKK or other such leaders, but he actually wrote that letter to clergy in Birmingham who were embarrassed by him and the movements coming uh, to their city in 1963. And really what these clergy were saying to Dr. King was, can you just take your time? Can you just sit back, let things play out? They w really wanted him to be passive and indifferent. And so Dr. King, through scraps of paper, he writes his own prison epistle in which he really says, here's why we can't wait. And so um, as we think about 2015, I think hate groups like the KKK and so on, they're, they're outliers, right? I mean, we're not dealing with lynchings or burning crosses, certainly not on the scale in which previous generations did. Instead, in its place is really the spirit of these clergymen, and that's the idea of passive indifference, where a lot of people question whether or not issues of race are real. Uh, in fact, we saw this in recent events in Ferguson and, and in New York City, and so we're dealing with that. Right, let's talk about that because a lot of people have been bringing up the issue of race, obviously, like for, you know, because of events that have happened recently in Ferguson, Missouri, and New York. So everyone wants to know do you think things have changed? How have they changed since the civil rights movement? Well, uh, naturally, legislatively, they have, right? I mean, so I can sit on any bus that I want as an African-American man. I can drink out of any water fountain. Uh, my kids can go to any school. I mean, so that's what the civil rights movement did. It was um, a galvanized grassroots movement that brought about um, widespread le legislative change. However, when we talk about issues of race, Race is not just structural, it's not just systemic, although there are traces of that even to this day. Fundamentally, racism, which is sin, is a matter of the heart. And when we talk about the civil rights movement, while they could change laws, they cannot change hearts. Only the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can. So as long as there is sin, there's going to be issues of race and racism, most certainly. And you mentioned that hearts have to change, Pastor, but in terms of public policy, when you think back to Dr. King's legacy, and we all remember that speech at the Lincoln Memorial, the dream that one day his children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. It does seem at times in the debate, in the public forum, it's been reversed. Witness this new controversy over the Oscars and the failure to see any nominees of color for best actor or best actress. Is there always a call for, quote, diversity? Does, does it make us more race conscious rather than color blind? So the end zone is not color blindness. Let, let me just be clear on that. I think the end zone is appropriate celebration. I mean, that's Psalm 139. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And a part of what that means, being fearfully and wonderfully made in the Imago Dei, is that God has made me, for example, as an African-American man. Now, my Christianity tells me that my blackness can never trump my Jesusness. So I don't lead with my ethnicity. However, my ethnicity is not something to ignore. It is something to be appreciated and celebrated. So I want to be very clear on that. The end zone is not, uh, is not color blindness. The other thing I think it's very important to understand is uh, racism, particularly in the United States, is so woven into the fabric of this nation. I mean, even before we specifically became a nation, racism and slavery was happening. And so for 
for these uh, monumental acts like the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act to have passed back some 50 years ago and for us to automatically assume in 50 years time there's no such thing as prejudice, there's no such thing as discrimination. Uh, most naturally we're going to see things as minorities, we're going to question whether or not we're being overlooked. So for example, um, you know, if I take Emmett Till, that 14 year old young boy who got um, brutally murdered for being accused of of whistling at a white woman, or if I take Medgar Evers, who was shot, African American man, in his own driveway in 1963, or if I take Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was assassinated in 1968, or those four little Alabama girls who was killed in 1963, or if I take Oscar, um, his na last Pastor, name escapes me. Um, in, Pastor, in we don't want to interrupt you, Will, but we only have 20 seconds left right now on this on this segment. So if you could tell us real quickly about your book, we want to bring that up so people who are interested in reading it can find it. Well, you can find it on Amazon, but what I'm saying in all those historical moments, it is impossible for me to not see race when I hear of Michael Brown and things of that nature. It is a discussion that will continue. Pastor Brian Lawrence, we hope you'll rejoin us. Uh, for now, thanks for being with us on MLK Day. And again, the name of the book, Letters to a Birmingham Jail, a response to the words and dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Our thanks to Pastor Loritz for his time. Stay with us. America's Forum continues following this Newsmax Now update.